topic. Just one minute, I'm just cross-checking whether everything is fine or not. I request uh, someone from uh, whoever attending from the YouTube live, please confirm whether my voice is clear and also the screen is visible. Then immediately we'll start the session. I humbly request the YouTube live participants, please confirm that my voice is clear and the screen is visible before me going ahead into the session. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Chat GPT. This is one of the buzzword in the internet. The artificial intelligence tool. Excel, we are working with since many decades. How we can integrate using the chat GPT, how we can do the great automation is the topic for next one hour. Without taking much of the time, let me open the topics for today. Introduction to the chat GPT. Let me go to the browser. You can go to OpenAI. Let me tell you a little background of this uh, chat GPT. Chat GPT is an artificial intelligence, natural language processing model. It, you can ask a question. It can gather the information from the web. It's going to give you a proper answer. Not all the time it gives the correct answer. Sometimes it may go wrong. OpenAI is the company who has taken the concept of transformer architecture in the NLP. NLP means natural language processor. They built this chat GPT. GPT was having so many models. At present, GPT-4 GPT is in the market. That's what you can find a title, Introducing GPT-4, OpenAI's most advanced system. When OpenAI introduced chat GPT, at that time it was GPT-3, then GPT-3.5, now it is GPT-4. OpenAI is the company who do a lot of research on the artificial intelligence, who build many products. You can see chat GPT is one product of them, DALI, Two is another product of them and so on. But after introduction of chat GPT, this particular uh, company became very famous in the world. And also it is always good if you can know about background all the time. But before me going ahead, let me log into the chat GPT. Whoever first time till now did not use how to work with chat GPT, you can go to the sign up and you can even log in and sign up with uh, Google. Google account. Let me sign up from Saran Kumar Royal email ID. Through the API, your Gmail will get connected to the chat GPT. What I'm going to do, I can, uh, uh, left side, you are having the, the chat conversations and uh, you will have a page like this. If you look here, there are a couple of instructions uh, uh, the chat GPT is trying to give us. Examples, you can take any of these examples explain quantum computer in single term single terms in simple terms got any creative ideas for 10 year olds birthday how do i make an http request in javascript though these all are very basic one to understand the definition and so on but especially for the software engineers the last example makes them very uh, important uh, to make their day to day work how do I make an HTTP request in JavaScript? If you ask this question, let us see what it's going to give. It's going to give a detailed explanation along with the code. Really for an engineer who want to do an automation or who, who want to build application, instead he going into a 
IDE integrated developed environment, start writing the code. He can simply ask the chat GPT. It's going to write the code for him. He can simply copy this code and he can start working. Let's go into the new chat to see what are the capabilities of the chat GPT. Remember what the user said in the earlier conversation. Meaning, this is a conversation model, right? For example, if I ask a question, what is the answer for two plus two, right? Now it is simply answering the answer is, the answer to two plus two is four. Can you add now, can you add four? Now what it is saying, yes, I can perform simple arithmetic operations like addition, what numbers you want to add to the previous answer. I'm just saying to the previous answer. If I add four to the previous answer four, the result is eight. So that's what I'm saying about the conversation model. When you set the previous answer, actually this is the previous answer, but it doesn't have any arithmetic value. So it is taking back the conversation and it is trying to understand that the previous value was four and it has to add four. So the total is eight. I did not mention anything. I just mentioned to the previous number, to the previous answer, meaning it I'm continuing this question. But for this question, the input it has to take is the previous one. That is what the meaning of it. Remember what user said earlier in the conversation. Allows user to provide follow-up corrections. Meaning, I can ask a question. Can you please uh, tell me about C.A. Saran Kumar, you? Then it is saying, I'm really sorry, Mr. Saran. I don't have any information on a person named C.A. Saran Kumar, you. Can you please provide me with more context or details about who this person is and what you would like to know about him. Then now what I'm trying to tell, C.A. Saran Kumar is an Excel blogger and a technology speaker. His Thursday for technology series, series is popular among the finance circle. Just as a small sentence I kept, his uh, YouTube names, his YouTube channel, The Excelism, is having up-to-date technology content. I just kept something. Now I did not ask any question. I have just provided the information, right? Now it is automatically trying to get, thank you for providing more context from the information you have provided. It seems yes, Arun Kumar is an Excel blogger. It is just writing whatever I have given. It's a, it is great to see individuals like CS. Now it is having its own creativity, right? It is answering as if the other side is a person. For example, when I'm trying to introduce X person to the Y person, and when I talk about X person very positively, then something the Y person will add and talk to the other person, right? It's great to see individual like C.S. Aran Kumar sharing their knowledge and so on. Now I'll ask a question. Do you know C.S. Aran Kumar, you? Earlier, what it has given, it, it said, it has not, it doesn't know anything, but it understood that, however, I have access to the available information on the net about people, topics, I can use that information, answer questions to the best of my ability. But based on the information you have provided, that means it always refers what you are asking in the follow-up question and so on, right? Now, let's look into the other capability, trying to decline inappropriate requests. I can ask a question stating that, can you help me to uh, make autumn bomb? I'll just ask a simple question. I'm sorry, I can't assist uh, with creating a weapon of mass destruction. It is illegal, illegal, highly unethical and so on. See, it understood that. This is something a very sensitive information. It, it understood that 
it has to decline. So that is what another capability of chat GPT. Of course, there are many limitations. May occasionally generate incorrect information. Example, I'm sure you all have done the bank audits. Now I'll ask a simple question. What is the large advances limit in case of LFR in bank audit? I, I know the answer. It is 10 crore, but the term large advances refers to the loans and advances. Loan, loans are advances granted by the bank. It has given some text, but it has given wrong information. Check it out. The large advances limit is not fixed, which is a wrong statement and can vary depending on the size and nature of the bank's operation. However, as per the RBI guidelines, banks are required to report all the advances exceeding 5 crore in the LFR reporting, which is wrong. Earlier in the LFR, it was 2 crore, but from 21 to 21, 22 financial year onwards, it is 10 crore or 10% 10 of total advances, whichever is lower. That means it, it can even sometimes give the wrong information because at the end of the day, what it is doing, it is taking the massive information and it understood the pattern and it is giving you the answer out of it. When about a topic you are asking where there is a limited information in the net or the information is not at all there, then obviously it cannot create an information for you. For example, there was an information about the large advances, 10 people written the blog, all 10 people written in the blog, which is wrong. No other blog or no other website was mentioning about the correct information. Then obviously out of the massive information, the large advances, there were five, six websites who were talking, all has given the wrong information. It thinks that it is the correct information and it will display as simple as it. So that's the reason you have to be very careful while you are confirming the answers what chat GPT is going to give you. May occasionally produce harmful instructions or biased content. Of course, this is what, you know, the future people are, you know, having a challenge. Meaning over the period of next three, four years, once people started using chat GPT, they think uh, chat GPT is giving accurate answer. Let's say if 99%, whenever I ask a question, when chat GPT is giving me the answer properly, I always have a positive mindset towards chat GPT that chat GPT, whatever it says, it is always correct. Tomorrow, maybe at a time when a person is asking a question, who is going to win in India in 2024, Lok Sabha elections? Chat GPT has given some ex-party name. The person who asked the question is a neutral guy. Then chat GPT, whatever the party name it has provided, the fellow is already having a positive attitude towards the chat GPT. Then thinking that chat GPT might have already done the analysis on the internet and all the massive content. A lot of people are discussing about this ex party. So maybe this is the party who is going to come into the power. People always go with the people, you know, parties who are going into the, you know, uh, power into the next elections and so on. Maybe that is what the biased content people are, you know, feeling challenge about. Limited knowledge of world and events after 2021. If you ask a question, for example, could you please uh, provide Infosys financials, financials highlights for financial year 20 to 23? Check it out what it is saying. I'm sorry, but as an artificial intelligence language model, I don't have access to the real-time financial data. My training only goes to September 2021 and doesn't have access to the internet to search for current financial information and so on. However, I can tell you that Infosys is one of the largest IC service, IT services and consulting companies in India and so on, right? So this is what a very quick introduction I feel very important for all of you. You should know about for what you should use ChatGPT. You must know about the limitations of the ChatGPT. You must also know about the capabilities of the ChatGPT. Before me going further into the automation, I'll give you one trick that there are so many conversations I asked in ChatGPT. 
If I want to copy paste this information, I need to click this, copy, then you can go to anywhere, then you just paste the information that will come. But if I want to have all these information into one word document, is it possible? No, because the question you cannot copy, you have to copy it manually. There is no copy option, but for the answers you can copy, but it is an individual item. Now, what I'm going to do here, very simple. I can go to, I can go down here and I can go to my account name. There is an option settings. In the settings, go to the data controls. Then there is an option called export data. You click export data. Then you confirm export, right? Now you got a message, successfully exported data. You should receive an email shortly with your data. This is exactly like in our WhatsApp, WhatsApp group or in the WhatsApp conversation, you can export the chart so that you will get in the email, a text file, which is having the entire conversation in the same way. So what I'm going to do, I will quickly unshare my screen and let me open my Gmail. Let me open the Gmail and show you whether I really got the message or not. One second. I'm trying to operate my Gmail account. What I mentioned there. Uh, let me go into my Gmail. I'm just trying to log in. Okay. Now let me show you what I have received. Let me share the screen. If you observe here in my Gmail, there is a mail, open AI, chat GPT, your data export is ready. Just 10, zero minutes ago, just now I have received. You currently requested a copy of your chat GPT data. Your data export is now ready. Please click on the link below to download the data. This link will expire in 24 hours. If you have any question, just go to the help center. Click this. A download will happen in the zip file. Now let me go to the downloads. Let me open this zip file. In the zip file, you have a lot of information. Once I click user, it's going to give my email ID, which I have registered in the chat GPT. It gives my phone number. It gives the conversation in the J JSON file, but I want in a proper file. So once I double click this, this file format is HTML. It will get open in the browser. It is having all the conversations, right? Wonderful. Now what I'll be doing, I'll simply close this control C. Let's go here. Let me go to my, yeah, today's uh, folder. I, I can put anywhere. Let's go to the desktop. I can do control V. Now I can just start a uh, second chat. I'm just waiting for the chat. Yeah. Let me open this. Let me do control P. I want to store this. In the PDF, I want to save it in the PDF, print to PDF on the desktop. Okay, it's going to ask me where it has to store. Let it store on the desktop, chat, GPT, sample, right? Now simple, I can go to my Word document. Let's go here. I can open that PDF, control O, browse. I can uh, go to the desktop. Then I can go for chat GPT uh, sample. Since it's a text, it is, uh, oops, one second. Yeah. Mm, it has not opened, is it? This document, I not. I did not find any content. One second. Let's go to the old document. Let's go here. I want to open this. Browse. Yeah, otherwise directly here it is there in the recent one. Chat GPT. Ideally that content uh, should paste here. Otherwise, you can copy and paste it just to see the values. No problem. Okay. It's just loading. Maybe just another 
10 15 seconds because when you are using a free version there may be a chance when the demand is more for the chat gpt it may not display your recent conversation wonderful wow what it has given each item it has displayed as a image and it has given me all the conversations okay you can simply save this on the desktop itself as a chat gpt sample wonderful right let it save close that's the way we can uh, export the content in the chat gpt very quickly let me take uh, another small thing about chat gpt let's go here let me close you do have incognito window in the chat gpt do you know that meaning whatever i am typing here i am asking the question it is getting it is getting stored here in the history but i don't want it should get stored into the history then what i need to do again go here go to the settings go to the data controls just disable this right once you go here disable this there is a content you need to understand save new charts to your history and allow them to be used to improve the chat gpt via model training unsaved charts will be deleted from the system within 30 days right close it now if you observe earlier it was a white color box now it became black an indication that it's an incognito chart history is off chart charts won't be saved in your history and are used for training of our models to improve the chat gpt unsaved charts will be deleted within 30 days that means here it can be any time only one conversation maximum one conversation in the sense you can have n number of questions but only one conversation if you want to go to the new conversation then you have to clear the chart then you should go into the new conversation i can ask a question what is your name right my name is chat gpt i am a language model created by open ai and so on i can ask a question who is open ai okay it is giving a lot of information stop generating when i am okay i can click stop, stop generating see if you want to clear the chart just clear the chart it's going to give you something but whatever the conversation you had earlier it is not getting stored okay so let me enable the chart history very important thing right now let's go into our microsoft excel related now let me close this one which i have taken earlier now let's go into let me close even this it's always good to clean up the folders this is also not required for us now let's go into the yeah let's look into the topics yeah i think i've covered about introduction to the chat gpt introduction to chat gpt user interface general used cases as i mentioned you can ask about email templates you can ask about drafting it can summarize the data and so on in fact today's session is more about microsoft excel let me go ahead for next 20 next 35 minutes to 40 minutes on excel and if you want a detailed explanation about the chat gpt and used cases in the same playlist you will be finding one a live i have taken on the chat gpt i request you all can access now let's go into the microsoft excel related specific used cases of excel very from the very smallest thing it can take uh, till the automation now what i can do i can have a sample data of rand between one to ten and i do can have the sample data now these two data sets i want to multiply and sum right now i'll ask a question i'll ask a simple question that I can, let me copy this data, paste the above data is available in A1 cell 2, which is cell B7 cell in Microsoft Excel, in Excel. I want to get the sum of product of both data sets, both columns what is the formula i should use your prompt has to be clear to get the sum of the product of both columns in excel you can use the sum product function 
here are here is how you can use the sum product function to get the result select an empty cell where you can display the result type the following function let me do control c i can just go here control v enter wow right this is a very small example right now could you please provide me some sample data which i can paste into microsoft excel the data should have product name this is very helpful for the people who do the corporate training who take the seminars like me and so on should have product name product id then product category and product subcategory right and the product cost and product price right the product nature should be electrical gadgets electronic gadgets right so here are some sample data you can use in excel wow it is giving me a sample for me so many people whenever i give the concepts of microsoft excel they always ask me a question sharan we don't have in excel to practice now you simple very simple just copy this data control c then you can go to your microsoft excel i know that this will not come directly into the proper format then you can just go and change the format otherwise if you want to get into your text you just put into your text as simple as it wonderful right now if i want to get the profit in g column what is the formula i should use if i want to get the profit into g column what formula is required simple because it has given it understood that now in the e column and f column the cost and the sales is there so it is simply asking me to take uh, this one and also it is asking me to how i have to drag it to calculate the profit for the remaining products click on g2 cell so it is asking me to write now in the g2 cell so let's go to the g2 cell and also it is giving me a uh, e2 i think it confused the cost the price minus cost i think i should correct it cost is the first column and uh, price is the next column cost is the first column and price is the next column now i am correcting right now it is trying to understand if the cost is in the column of e the price is in the second column that is the reason don't always believe you always need to have a validation controls on your own and it is also very honest whenever it does a mistake if you can properly guide then it is going to give you a proper answer now this is going to be the profit these all are small small examples in microsoft excel how you can use it now what i am going to take now here i have the computers right i want to get okay uh, here i have the product id right i want to get the product name can anyone tell in the live what is the formula i need to use here what is the formula i should use here i if i select a product id i should get the product name here anyone who ever watching this online live please tell me what is the formula we should use here to get the product name don't tell about vlookup function don't tell about vlookup function because vlookup function will not work in this case vlookup look for this value in this table get me the first column value as an answer is it wrong why because vlookup function is having a limitation that it is always looking into the leftmost column of the table but in this case the value i am looking for is not in the leftmost column it is in the second column so vlookup will not work now what is the question i am asking
the above data I have pasted into Excel and also I got the profit in G column. Now, right, let me first confirm and to confirm to the chat GPT that everything is fine. Now I am just asking a follow-up question. In uh, C12, in C12, product ID 3 is there. I want to get the result, the respective product name in D12 cell, right? What is the formula I should use? I know many people are saying XLOOKUP, but let us see what it does. It's doing a mistake, is it? You must be very careful. Okay, it is thinking that your data A column, check it out, to get the product name to the corresponds to product ID D in cell C12, you can use the VLOOKUP function. Here is the VLOOKUP function, C12, a2 column B8, it is very clever understanding, right? But now I will tell to the chat GPT that product ID is in B column and product name is in A column. We look up, now tell me correct formula. The product ID is in B column and product. Oh, this is blundered. This is blundered. Okay, so that's the reason always important uh, while we use the Microsoft Excel related in the chat GPT, you should correct, you should have your own validation controls. When I take this, it is giving a, now what I do, okay, let us, Take this and enter. I am getting using your formula an error. Okay, no problem. Let Chat GPT understand what went wrong. Oh my God. Now it is using the defined name concept. Okay. Even now, hash any. Oh, now it is saying, Sharon, somewhere you went wrong. Please go and double check. It is giving you, okay. In a, in a way, though it is giving a wrong answer, but it is giving me all the ideas where it may go wrong. Now it is in the correct position. Now you check it out. Now, this is very interesting. If you are still getting an error, now it is going back and trying to check in how many ways this formula go wrong. It could be due to the product ID in C12 not being found in the list of the products. Here are a few things you can try. Double check that product ID in the C12 is correct and matches one of the product ID in the column B. Make sure that there is no leading and trying spaces. I feel this is one of the things generally we go wrong in the case of VLOOKUP function. Leave about chat GPT, it may went wrong. But normally, we may take Saran, Saran I am searching, but in the lookup range, Saran space is there. But both look same because space is not visible for the user. We think that Saran is there, Saran is there, why it's not giving a correct answer, but any error but it is not Saran and Saran space, sorry, Saran and Saran, but it is Saran and Saran space. Since it is an extra space, it cannot give the correct answer. So you better use the trim function. That's what it is saying, very clever. Check that the format of the product IDs in the column B is inconsistent with the format C12. This is also a very good one, very good example. See what it is doing, whenever you say you are getting any error, it is giving all the probable mistakes what you might have done. It may be saying, Sharon in a Microsoft Excel, this may be looking like a number, but what you have taken 
is text. When you are trying to look for a text in the, sorry, number in the text column, obviously that's not available. That is what another probable mistake it is saying. Now it is into the correct position. Try using the match function to look at the row number of product ID and then use the index function to retry the corresponding values. Now I am 100% sure this gives the correct answer. Now you go here, instead of VLOOKUP function, use index and match. Wonderful. Now I can ask the question based on the participants response. They said X lookup in the comments. Now I am saying, what is the formula? Okay, can you try using X lookup? Can you try using X lookup? Right, so let me submit. Sure, here is the example. Wonderful. Can you tell me why you did not guess XLOOKUP earlier? I'm asking the people who are in the live, please tell me why it did not understood XLOOKUP earlier. It should have given XLOOKUP as a direct answer, right? The reason is in the web, internet, huge content is available on the VLOOKUP. Very huge, massive content. XLOOKUP, since it introduced very recently, maybe very limited content is there. I'm just saying and using the word called maybe. Okay, there may be different reasons, different patterns. But looking into the, uh, you know, basics and logical part of how chat GPT work, I may be thinking in the VLOOKUP, for the VLOOKUP function, there is a lot of content in the web. It can easily go and search and take the relevant content. But for the XLOOKUP function, very limited content is there. Uh, limited content comparatively the VLOOKUP. That's the reason at last it guessed, right? Control C. Now I can just go to my formula here. Let us try this one also. One second. Yeah. Now I'll just paste my formula here using XLOOKUP. Wonderful. Excellent. Now, why should we guess? We can ask chat GPT itself. Then why you did not provide a simple function using XLOOKUP, using XLOOKUP, using XLOOKUP in the first instance? Let's see what answer it is saying. Oh, it is saying very politely. I apologize for the confusion. I provided the VLOOKUP formula initially because it is more widely used. It is still not understanding that VLOOKUP formula is giving the error. You did a mistake. Let me correct her. You did a mistake. VLOOKUP always looks for the value in the leftmost column of the table. However, the product ID I am I was looking for is in the left is not in the leftmost column. That is the reason it has provided an error. Let me correct. Always feel like chat GPT is a kid. Now it is saying me. You are correct, Mr. Saran. I apologize for my mistake. We look up always search for the lookup value in the leftmost column of the table array. And in this case, the product ID is the second column of the table. Thank you for, oh my, very good. Very good. At least it is listening. Okay, kids are not listening these days. Now I'll ask another question. Now I'll ask another question. Okay, we look up I asked for X lookup I asked for, and it, it understood that leftmost column dash to search. Can you tell me any other limitations of VLOOKUP function? Any other functions of VLOOKUP function? Yes, there are a few limitations of VLOOKUP function. The lookup value must be in the leftmost column that anyway I have covered. Exact matches that anyway is 
implied limited to vertical lookups very good slow for large data sets yes that is another biggest problem limited to one value this is okay. this is what i expected actually vlookup can only return one value at a time if you need to retry multiple values from a table from lookup value you need to use a different combinations like index and match or pivot table and also it has not given another limitation i know that another limitation is vlookup always result look for the always looks the first value in the lookup array in the table array but not look up second time value if a value is repeating more than once it is always looking up for the first time yes you are correct mr saran another limitation of vlookup is that always return the first matching value in the table array if there are multiple rows in the vlookup function sorry multiple rows in the table contains the lookup value vlookup only returns the first match now i'll ask if that is the case what is the correct formula to get the second appearing value yeah if you need to retry second or nth matching value this is what i'm expecting wonderful what it is saying you can combine the vlookup function with the index and match function here is an example formula that will return the second matching value in the table wonderful what i can do you know i don't know whether this formula is correct or wrong let me copy this oh no uh this is searching for okay let me copy this entire formula otherwise you can put this copy code because all the codes and formulas will be displayed here now what i am trying to tell now this is also for now whenever i say for it always gives smart tv but it will not give wireless earbuds now what i am trying to take this is copy here paste here now copy here now paste here four is appearing more than once when i take the drop down of the product id whenever i say four the vlookup function fail look for the value in the leftmost column of the table and get get me the second column value always smart but i want the wireless earbuds it has given me some formula not sure whether this formula is correct or wrong control v okay now it is asking me to change lookup value is this can you tell me why it is giving me the syntax to change my values because this time it doesn't know where is your data because earlier conversation is what i have taken the data from the sample what chat gpt has provided it doesn't have any duplicate values now i have given another situation of hypothetical if at all duplicate is there if i want to get the second value what is the method i should do then table array let's look into this right then match index i have to take the table array table array is this okay look up value sorry table array meaning in this case is a look up value whether is it matching with the lookup value let me take uh, lookup value is this i think it is done not sure oh it's giving a value error now i need to correct this see lookup value is the value what you are searching for table array is the table you are searching in match uh where is the match function okay match to index table array lookup value now let us see uh finds the column number of the second largest value now i have taken where is a match function in this case okay now let us see where i went wrong now whenever i am trying to okay it has given me an array i missed it actually so it has taken one multiplication with one what is the meaning of it whether let me check whether these all are matching i got false 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 true true false false so whenever i am trying to multiply this with 1 i am getting 0001100 1, then in the index function wherever i want to get the first 
row value and the second column value. Now I got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Now I'm trying to look for the second out of this. Okay, I think uh, it, it went a little wrong with respect to the one value. Uh, I think it should be the one if I'm not wrong. Why? Because this is the match type is zero. Okay, I'm sorry. And uh, this is the match type. And this is the value I'm looking for. In this, the second matching value, one second, not two, ideally this should be one. Okay, I'm, I'm just thinking, I'll tell you where exactly it is matching, right? Oh, it is not the case. I'll tell you, okay, I'll update in the comment section. I'll also ask the question. Now, what I'm going to do, I will take the same scenario. I'll ask a chart GPT to give me a proper result. Now, not this one, I'm sorry. Let me copy this code. Maybe if I can spend little time, I can understand. But anyway, what did he say? This is the lookup value, right? My lookup value is this. Now, this is the table array. I'm just trying again so that we'll see. This is the second argument. This is the table array. Now, match is the function. First argument, what value you are looking for? Lookup value, it is saying two, right? Index table. In the index function, the first argument is what is the range in which you are looking for? Now, the value I'm looking for is table array. Let's take the table array is nothing but this. Then I'm looking for lookup value. Then let me take the lookup value is this. Then into one and so on. Enter. It is showing NA. Meaning I will ask a question. What should be table underscore array? in the index function mentioned above. I'm, I'm just asking follow-up question. Bear with me for a couple of other things. We'll go into the VBA related also slowly for next 10, 15 minutes. Okay. It is now giving me an example. This is a proper one. See, don't worry. Whenever you get a wrong answer, it is going to give you the follow-up question with the proper answer. In the index function, the formula I provide a table array argument refers to the range of cells you want to search for the lookup value. So if you want to search for the lookup value in the range of A2 to A10, the table array should be A2 to A10. Here is an example. So A2, A2, A2 colon D10 match. I think I've taken correct value. So now this everything is fine. So copy this and uh, let me paste here. Now lookup value is there in this. Then B2 column. Now lookup value again is there for ideally it should give the correct answer. Still any. Okay. Finally, zero argument is okay. Don't worry. We will do a lot of R&D on this. And I'll also tell to chat GPT where it went wrong. I just need a little time. So multiplying this array will convert into, uh, because it is live, I'm not spending more time. Otherwise, see, any error means it is trying to search something, okay, in the match function, but it is not available, right? Now it's very simple. What I'm going to do, now it is giving for this particular index formula. Let me re-engineer this. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, now I want to know, uh, now it is trying to check two. Two actually is not there in this array. It is always 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. It is, now, it is not getting at all two. That is the reason you are getting a, an error. Whenever I put one, now match function is resulting me, what you know, four, right? Now when this result is a four, then four is you know, column index number four is not at all there. So it cannot be a correct answer at all. It cannot be because match function it is saying finds the column number of the second matching value. What if I column number, I want a row number. Okay, I think it is going wrong. Why match should give me column number, but I'm looking for row number. 
Now let me try to correct this more. You are correct. The match function typically returns the row number of the matching value. Oh, it is giving me an example. I don't want the example. So I don't want to leave you chat GPT because it has to give us the correct answer. Stop generating. It is nonsense. Now I am telling properly, assume this data, assume above data is from A16 cell 2, cell 2, B23 cell. Data is in A16 cell to B30, B23 cell. Okay. Then what I'm asking the question in D, which cell? 17, I have entered product ID as 4. When I use VLOOKUP, it is giving me the first instance matching value that is smart TV as product name. But I want the second matching value. I am now more clear and I'm trying to give bigger formula to see whether it is really working. Don't worry, in this case, how to uh, do this situation, I got to, I already know it, but I'm just trying to see whether really chat GPT is doing that. Now let us follow the instructions. Uh, to get the second occurrence of the specific product ID in the table of using VLOOKUP, you can use the following formula, B column B, small, if A column A is a lookup value, then, uh, row A column A minus min something it has provided. Look up value with the product ID. So this formula uses this so and so. Uh, here is how you can apply this formula. In E17, enter the following formula. Now I'll simply copy this. What I'll do, I'm just assuming where it is asking me to paste D7, D E17, right? No problem. I'll paste here. Enter. Wonderful. See, it may go wrong initially, but it gives the correct answer. Now, what I'm saying is, I want, this is also one. Now, whenever I go, I put one here. Now, it has not given the first one, but it has given the second one. That's a smart watch. First one, we look up is given. The formula suggested by chart GPT, it has given the second one. Wonderful. Now, can I make this more automated way, consider, consider the instance value I am looking for the, okay, consider nth matching value, nth matching value I am keeping in, uh, for example, I'll keep it here, right? D18 cell. If I put one first instance matching value should come. If I put two second instance matching value should come. And so on. Please build the formula. I am, I started with a very small example. I am going ahead. Wow, the last one is the only change you need to do. No problem, you can, I understood it. It is very simple what it is saying. Mr. Saran, this is the product ID. Then this is the instance number. If you put one, it's going to give you, this is the one it is asking me to change. This is the one. If you put this two, second value. If you put four, first value is this, second value is this. If I put for the sixth product, sixth product, first value is available, second value is not available, right? If I put one, it's taking the same. For example, the four is there, the third instance. If I put four here, 
Then if I put one year, I got smart TV, two year, I got wireless earbuds, three is there, I got gaming console. Let me appreciate you are excellent. Any question? Don't worry, we'll, we'll take extra maybe 10-15 uh, minutes today. Bear with me. Can someone please confirm whether my voice is clear and the screen is visible? I'll take another two, three case studies and we'll close this Thursday for technology today's session. Can someone please confirm me whether the voice is clear and the screen is visible? Yeah, I'm, I'm also cross-checking. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so let me go ahead with other cases. Yeah, thank you, Ganesh sir. Thank you, Pargat Singh. Now let me go into the other case study. Now, okay, now let's go into the automation. Now, instead of me, okay, for me to write, for me to write this complex formula is very difficult every time. Could you please build a custom function, function with three variables, three arguments. You know, what is that? what are the arguments? Table array, or else, you know, um, let me take lookup array, then return array, then instance number, simple, and uh, I'm sorry, one more argument is required, lookup value. See, at the end of the day, I am looking for a lookup value, one value, then I am looking into a column, I want a result in the other column, I want the instance number, right? So meaning, if I put an instance number one, this is exactly like a VLOOKUP function, right? XLOOKUP function. But in the XLOOKUP function also, the same type of limitation is there. I'm sure you all are agree with me. When in the XLOOKUP function also, the same type of limitation is there. Somewhere we want a solution, automation. The little advantage in the XLOOKUP function, you know what? If only two times it is repeating, you can search from the last to first so that whatever the second value that will come in the search first, it's going to give you the result. But otherwise, if any value is appearing three times, uh, you cannot get the second value in the Excel lookup also. Now I am asking Excel, chat GPT, for me to write this complex formula is very difficult every time. Could you please build a custom function using VBA? Custom function. Let me give the name also. Custom function name, VLOOKUP X. I'm giving a different function name. VLOOKUP X, the function name also I'm defining. Using VBA with four arguments, with uh, these arguments, right? Now, do you think it's going to provide? Let us see, fingers crossed. Wonderful, first of all, it has taken the function, what I suggested. It has taken all the arguments for which I have given lookup value as a variant, lookup array and so on. No problem. Let it give. Let it give. Wonderful. Wonderful. I understood. Let it write. Copy this. What I'm going to do now, I will go to the developer tab. I'll go to visual basic. This is the one I'll right click, insert module as you all know you can put in the module either the subroutine with respect to the procedures even you can give the functions i can customize my own function now this function name is a vlookup x i have to give four arguments vlookup value lookup array range lookup array is a range vlookup value is a variant because we are not sure that can be text or a number that can be even any other value type but lookup array must be always a range. Return array must be always a range. Instance number must be an integer. You cannot ask 
instance number. It must be an integer. The result can be a variant because whatever the respective value in the uh, return array that, we, that that is going to give. Okay, dim i is a long, j is a long, two variables it has given, match count, whatever. Okay, I know you may be uh, not very interested to know this code. Okay, don't worry. Let me save it. Why should I bother about this code? Let me save it. It is just asking me to save this file. Let me save it as .xlsm, then examples. Right? Now save and close. Wow. Copy this. I'll just go here. Control V. Do you think it work? Don't worry. Product name. Sorry. Product ID. Right? Then I'm having a instance number. Then I'm having a product name. Now let me put in the drop down. All these instance numbers. Let me put the instance number manual. I want to get the formula here. Now let me select one. I want to get first instance. So what is the formula you should write? VLOOKUP, wow. It has given me a custom function called VLOOKUP X. It will not give a syntax for the custom functions. Uh, whatever the functions given by the Microsoft Excel, the syntax will appear, but don't worry. X lookup, V lookup, X. Then I am looking for this value in this product. Don't take the table range because I have given only the uh, lookup range. Then this is what the return array. This is what my index number. Enter. Wow. Two. Very smartwatch. Yeah. Oh, two items are there. Three, an error because it's not there. Two, smartwatch. One, let's take four. One, it's there. Uh, smart TV. Two, three. Wonderful. See, now I need not to even write a very big formula. What the chart GPT has suggested, I can, writing this formula is very difficult. Maybe first time you can copy and paste it, but next time you are very, very difficult for us to even know what it is trying to do. Now what I'm trying to do, I am just taking a help from the chat GPT to write the code. So it is giving me a beautiful code. Now I just copy pasted this code there and it is absolutely working. Absolutely working. That's the advantage of using the chat GPT. Now, any specific case you want me to take, you can put in the chat box. I'll take two cases, what you are going to suggest. Now, let me ask a couple of questions, whether it can give properly or not, whether it can give properly or not. Let me make this uh, one, let me make this uh, uh, function and this one more automated way and more complex. Let me make this example more complex. Once, okay, to the continuation to the, the continuation to, to the Yabo query. I want I want the result value must highlight with red background or light red color. You're getting my point? In continuation to the above query, I want the result value, result value in the written array must highlight in light red color value. Okay, it is giving uh, the code extension to me. Now it is giving a proper comment also to me get the match index for the nth instance value. The, it is giving a documentation for me so that I can understand each function and formula what it is doing. Okay, no problem. Now I am done. Thank you so much, ChatGPT. I'll just copy it. Don't worry, wait for a couple of minutes. Now I'll go to the automate. I'll go to the developer, visual basic. I'll make this uh, function name as something different. Otherwise, instead of me deleting that, right click, Insert, oh sorry, I inserted a user form, is it? My, my mistake, I'm sorry. Right click, I can insert a module, 
let me do VLOOKUP. This time what I do, instead of VLOOKUP X, let me have VLOOKUP 2X. So finally, the result also I have to change. You should know little VBA, otherwise don't edit what it has given. Okay, since I know that, because already VBA X is there, so that's the reason I made it 2X. Let me save it, let me close it. Now what I'm going to do, equal to VLOOKUP, double X, now look for this value within this. Then the third argument is return array. The fourth argument is the instance number. Why? The fourth value is three, one second. We look up XX, look up for this value in this tape return array. How many arguments? Let me go here. Look up value, look up array as a range. Okay. Then let me little decode this formula. Yeah, I look up array is fine, return array is fine, instance number is fine, but I should not get the error like value error because the value which I'm looking for is four and A2 colon A8 is nothing but my look, look up array and this is what my matching array, nothing but the return array and this is what my three instance. So when I enter, it should not give a value error. Let us go and read the code again once again for all of you. Just bear with me for another couple of minutes. It has given a match index function. Okay, now I'll tell this is giving me value error. Let it debug. Why should I bother? Kindly tell how to recreate macros using chat GPT. Give an example regarding converting a text to accounting and removing commas. Text to accounting in the sense, uh, Pargat, can you be a little elaborate? Okay, may occur in one of the following instance, though the input is correct, but still it is showing hash value error. In the meanwhile, let us try with the other examples. I, I'll take here one, I'll take here two, smartwatch is coming, one. So earlier we look up X function is coming, but this is not coming. Is there any way in the program I missed VLOOKUP XX? Mm, I think uh, everything is perfect. Everything is perfect, but still it is giving value error. No problem. Let chat GPT know uh, if the input arguments are correct, but the function is returning error. It may be due to the error in the VBA code. Could you please correct and send back? Could you please correct and uh, share? Here is the updated version of VLOOKUP X function. No problem, let it try. See, when I asked for a little extension of, I want a different color, now it has, it went wrong. Earlier it has given absolutely correct. No problem, let us try. Remember to save the function in a module in the Visual Basic. VLOOKUP X. Okay, to use this enter formula in the cells like this, no problem. What I'm going to do, let's copy this. Let me take this in the VBA as a Y, VLOOKUP Y. Otherwise, what I'll do, instead of me changing there, I'll change here instead of earlier case, instead of X2, one second, I think somewhere, yeah. Instead of X2, Y, let's put here Y, let us see here also why uh, I think everything is fine. Now here, this is X okay. And uh, this everything is fine, right? Now what I'll be doing, I will take the X now, enter, it is still giving a value error. Now I'm sure we look up Y will work correctly. Look for this value within this comma, Written this, this is the instance number. If I put two here, it's giving. If I put four here, one year, giving two year, giving three year, giving. But I have to dig more. Don't worry. Once I find the solution, then I'm going to keep it here in the uh, comment section. Uh, like this, you can do a lot of automation related work. 
you but you should appreciate this that it is giving you majority of the cases correct. See, when I prompt again and again and again, I'm 100% sure it gives the correct answer. But let me finally cross check again whether anywhere I'm going wrong. We look up X, written array, result is a variant, application dot lookup value, and so on. So, mm, no, it's not giving still the correct because everything is fine. We look up X is nothing but the result. So, I have to cross check. Don't worry. Okay, uh, let me take the last example and case study. One example, I'll take it and we'll close it. What I want is the financial year is something which we always bother. Meaning, let's say, let me have the rand between date of 2010, 1-1 one, till date of, date of 2023, 12, 31st. Copy paste special values. Otherwise, keep it as it is, not a problem. Now, what I'm looking for is this is a fresh question. This is a fresh question. Otherwise, it may consider the previous extension. Could you please build custom function names fi, which should, which should provide me the financial year for the date in the format in the format fy xxxx iphone xx assume the financial year starts from april month april 1st okay let's see whether it's going to give me the proper code. You need not to bother much in this case. I know it may go wrong in the first instance itself. Financial year DT as date as string. It has taken string. I'm not sure whether this can accept it or not, but let me, okay, no problem. Let's copy this. Let's go to my visual basic where I need to go. Let's go to the data. Sorry. Let's go to the developer. Visible basic. Now let me enter another function. Financial year. I'll just go here. Equal to FY. Select this. I'm sorry. Select this. Enter. Wow. It's giving me the correct values. Now whenever you refresh, the results are coming automatically. Check it out. 15, 16. This is correct. This is very important. 16, 17. With a simple FY. With a simple FY. Now, what I'm going to ask now, the little extension, could you please add? I generally have an habit of using could you please, though it is a chat GPT, it never bother because it's not a human, but we should always give respect because it is saving a lot of, lot of time for us, right? Now, what I'm asking the chat GPT is, could you please add another argument? Another argument where I can define, I can input, where I can input the start month. That means as of now, the argument is only, I should take the date, right? Now it's going to give two arguments. One D as a date, second one optional one, start month. Why it is optional? Because by default, it is 4. If you ignore it, it considers as a 4. But if you want specific, it will consider. Right? Now, what I'll be doing. Yeah, let's go little up. Copy this code. And I want to little change the name because financial year is already there. I will just put enter. Don't take financial year. FYX, an extension to that. Right? So let's take. Uh, FYX, FY, and so on. Wonderful. Now, what I do, I go here. I will just put this equal to financial year, this comma four, enter. Oh, why it is going wrong? Now, let me ignore this. It is giving me the correct answer. But why, when I, whenever I'm saying the second argument is two, why it is giving me the, oh, the, sorry. The formula is FYX, I am sorry. Equal to FYX, by default, it gives the same result. 
whatever I have taken here, right? Mm. Oh my God, it has given wrong result. Whenever I have taken F, Y, X, it has given wrong result. Somewhere it went wrong. For the date, for the date, for the date, what is the date? 17, 9, 2019, 17, 9, 2019, it is resulting last five minutes resulting FI 2020 06. FI 2020 06 has a, as 2000, okay, 2006. This is wrong. Now it's going to correct it. My apologies for the error in the previous function. Here is the corrected function. Added start month argument. Why it is doing a lot of... Uh, I even doubt uh, whether this is really working. But anyway, let us see why it is confusing. Because I may need to give the instruction again that fi x x fi x x now this function name is f y x x and f y x x i am doubting whether this is also really work comma four. Oh my god oh it is i'm just saying start a month in the financial year see what it is saying it is trying to take the wrong results completely wrong results okay now what i'm trying to tell to the chat gpt Okay, very properly. Please, you went entirely wrong. You went entirely wrong. Let me instruct properly. I can take even the previous question since I already asked, not this one. Let me go a little down. There is the question about, uh, yeah, not this one even. Let me go a little down. Yeah, this one. This is the question. Control C. Okay. Now, now, user, user should input second argument as month start for the financial year. Starting month number. Start month number. Start month number for the financial year. If user ignores, it should consider four, meaning financial year starts from 1st April. Always remember when you want to use the chat GPT, your prompt has to be clear. Don't ask a vague question because after all, it is a artificial intelligence. So if your question is very limited, it may be having n number of patterns about that question. When you ask the question very properly, then it will not have so many patterns about your questions. So one type pattern, it's going to give correct solution most of the cases. Let me go wrong. Let me go to the chat GPT. I Hope this time it will not give a wrong answer because my instruction is very clear now. But let me see. Yeah, now it is correct. I'm just thinking now it is correct. Yeah, I have a doubt here. Why it has used financial year underscore FI year, okay? Then I found format start month what is start month? What is the relevance of the start month? Again, it understood wrong. Start month is four, four comma double zero. What is the meaning of it? Not sure. Anyway, let us see. It may give you the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let us see. I think that is the only place it is going wrong. Now what I'll be doing, F, let me put instead of F5, uh, fin year, fin year, F I F I N Y R is the only place it is asking about fin 
year, right? Let's go here, equal to fin year. This is the one, just close it, enter. Oh, year, it, it cannot use because year is already a argument, a, already a reserved word. So it cannot use the year. This is the problem, okay? So it is also going sometimes wrong. So instead of me taking year, let's take this. I'm just assuming that that is what it went wrong. If the month is greater than this, financial year is equal to the year, right? Now, year minus one. I'm just thinking everything should go fine now. Not sure. Yeah, my Excel is, okay, this is in the debug. So let me close it. Let me stop debugging. Yeah, let me write the formula now. Okay, it is showing wrong value because this is the place where it went wrong actually. Okay, this is the place where it went wrong. Okay, no problem. I'll uh, try to give the solutions for this. I can start asking the questions. I'm sure it gives the correct answer. Now, let me ask the last question, maybe, because I know the mistake, what it has done. You did many mistakes. Year is already a reserved word. And you used as a variable. Same like month also. Also, I did not understand. I also did not understand the second part in the format, the second part in the format. Financial year, XXXX, iPhone, YY. Meaning, financial year, 2010, iPhone, 2012. Right? Sorry. Oh, I went wrong now. Actually, my question. It should be 2010, iPhone, 11. My apology for the mistake in the code. Yeah, it is again going wrong because it is take the same month of year end date and so on. It is not relevant, but leave it. Most of the cases, at least in this case, it has given correct prompt. And uh, we can st start asking the question, start correcting it. And I'm 100% sure your chat GPT is uh, smart to give you the proper answers. And also you can start using the VBA codes. You can also ask... Uh, uh, you can ask VBA code so that you can copy and paste it automatically. Generally, the code, what we are looking for, could you please provide, provide a VBA code, VBA code to convert a number into English words in rupees. This is common one people ask. It has given a VBA code called a number to words. Let it write. Let it write. At least expecting this one, it has to give correct answer. However, it has given many ways correct, but I have to give continuously the instruction. See, in our school days, we were, since our school days, we were concentrating the answer always. Okay, but henceforth, in future, I'm 100% sure there will be subject to the students or from student life till maybe intermediate, at least one chapter, how to question. Because when the world is changing towards the chat GPT, it's not about getting the answer because you are getting your answer, no problem. Because people, uh, you know, applications like chat GPT is there. But how to question is the one very important. If you question, I question, if both questions are different, uh, the result automatically different. The way the chat GPT communicate is automatically different. Let me paste this. What is the name of this? This name of the code is number to words. I'll go here. I can just put some number equal to number to words. I'm not sure. Even this, it is giving wrong, is it? Number to words, uh, 
binary value as a double. Mm. Yeah, I have to debug it. Okay, I'll try keeping in the uh, chat box uh, where it is going wrong. I'll try to, now I have to, you know, debug uh, completely one after other. I can start uh, debugging this particular uh, function. So once I start debugging, I'll get to know where it went wrong. Okay, in fact, uh, today I've taken more than an hour uh, on this topic of chat GPT. Guys, start using it. Though it is giving wrong answers, start using it because I told you, right? Uh, Otherwise, if chat GPT is there, I am 100% sure I may not write this type of formula manually, this type of formula manually. Otherwise, if chat, if chat GPT is not there, I may not write this type of formula, like we, we look up why and so on. Okay. Otherwise, if chat GPT is not there, I may not write the code like this. I, in the sense, the people who are not having a good experience with respect to the formulas or with respect to the functions, they cannot write for financial year. Every time you have to take a if function, check it out the month. If it has less than four, then take last year if on this year. If it is greater than the four, greater than equal to four, then this year if on next year. Very big formula you need to write. But thanks to ChatGPT, it has given me the solution for most of the cases. However, as I mentioned, it is a small kid. Based on your input, your prompting, it does the work properly. For the kids, whatever we instruct, it exactly does the same, right? So if you are not giving the information properly, it doesn't know what it has to act upon. Chat GPT is exactly the same. Thank you so much. See you all in the next Thursday for technology with some other content.